If you want your Samsung device to be more fast, more easy to use, in this video we will change some settings so you can use S Pen, gestures and multitasking for the full potential possible. First of all, S Pen. This is the key feature of S24 Ultra and one of the main reasons why I bought this device in the first place. This helps me a lot on the field, helps me a lot in my work with conversations with people. I will show you how I use it and how I set it up. To configure S Pen, you need to go to Settings and find Advanced Features. Press Advanced Features and you can see all possible tabs for configuring your device. We need S Pen. If you can see, this shows the battery percentage. Also, it shows that S Pen is removed. I'm holding it in my hand. And down, you can see all possible configurations. First tab that you see called Air Actions. If you go inside, you can turn these settings on. You can press Learn How and phone will try to teach you how to use it. I will describe this tab as universal gestures. For example, press and hold pen button. You can press and hold S Pen and phone will do some tasks or launch application. You can set it up. I made Smart Select. If I press and hold S Pen, I enter Smart Select. I can select some small part of the screen and use it to make a screenshot of this particular part, to send it via email or maybe some messages. You can set everything you need for this feature. If you tap press and hold pen button on the screen, you can configure it as you like. You can choose any S Pen features. You can also pick suggested apps or any app you want. For example, calculator. If I press and hold S Pen to launch calculator app, very useful, you can configure it for your liking. For me, I used Smart Select. Next, you can see these universal gestures. I made these three buttons the same as these buttons on the bottom. You do not have to make these complicated gestures. You can just make this left and right, up and down. This is back. I can press the button on the S Pen and make left to right, right to left gesture. For example, I can go back. And I can minimize this window by just pressing and going up and down. See? Sometimes when your hands are busy or you are sitting in the car, your phone on the car charger, you can use your S Pen to manipulate these basic features. You can tap these individual gestures and set it up whatever you like. You can use navigation buttons, S Pen features, suggested apps and all apps that installed on your phone. For example, this down and up gesture I set to make a screenshot to quickly write some notes. Look, I press and go in down and up and I make screenshots. See? Very easy. I can tell enough how this feature is useful to me. I use it constantly, tens and even hundreds time a day. This feature is a selling feature for me. I like it. And this gesture. You can set it up whatever you like. For example, if I press S Pen and just move it rapidly, like I'm shaking it, it will open translator. If I hover over some text or text is on the pictures, I can translate words for different languages. Very useful handy feature. Also, if you scroll down, you can see that S Pen gesture can be used in camera app and media app. If you are watching YouTube videos, if you are listening to music, you can control volume, you can select previous or next clips on music, and you can pause, play. If you launch camera, I can press and make photos or start video. See? I made a photo by just pressing the S Pen. All these gestures are called air actions, and you can configure it whatever you like. If we go back, you can see the next useful feature is called Air Command. If we go inside Air Command section, you can see that this is quick access menu pop-up. You can quickly access apps and S Pen features in a convenient collapsible menu. You can drag anywhere on the screen. How we can open this? You can see that Show Air Command icon. If we press it, you will see that we constantly will have this small circle. If we press it, the Air command menu will open and you will see different options here. You can configure it whatever you like. You can 
have S Pen features, you can have quick access to some applications, for example, camera, and this is a very useful feature. Create a node. If you press, you will create some nodes. Smart Select. You can choose part of the screen to make a screenshot. Screen Write. It makes screenshot of the entire screen with ability to handwrite on it. PenUp is application of Samsung. It teaches you how to draw. You can share your drawings with another people, or you can make time lapses of what you draw. Magnify tool. This is nice feature if you choose magnify and hover over the screen. You can see some details. I use it a lot. For example, if I open the gallery, I can see some pictures and I can magnify it to look at the quality. You can use it anywhere on your screen. Next feature is Write on Calendar. This is a useful feature if you need to take some notes on your calendar. You can write anything on your calendar and it will have your notes. Translate feature. If you press it, you can choose any language you want. For example, let's choose English to Arabic. If you hover over some parts of your screen, it will translate it to different languages. Calendar. It even works on the photos and videos, as you see. I use this feature a lot. And of course, you can press Add and customize it the way you want. You can add S Pen features and any applications you want. I suggest to use Compact and hide this command icon and open Air Command Center with Pen button. Do not touch screen with the pen, just hover it over and press the button and it will automatically open Compact Command Center. I assigned every possible S Pen feature that I use and some applications to this center and I can use it very quickly. Also, you can customize your Samsung device even further if you go to the Samsung store and find good lock. Just press the search and type good lock. Install this good lock, open it up and you can see a bunch of different settings. You need to find the application called Fantastic. It customizes your S Pen and Command Center a lot. Let's press it. Here you can choose a style of your Command Center. Let's use this circle. Now, if I hover the S Pen over the screen and press the button, this circle Command Center comes and I can choose any feature I want. But I find this customization visually appealing. It's not very practical. So I suggest you to look at all this, but still use default command center because, because I find default compact the most functional, still minimal, yet informative. You can see naming, you can see colors. You can also change hover icon as you like. You can download your custom pointers, but I stick to the default one. You can change the sound. But I will still use default one. Next row of settings called Air View. This is a very nice feature. Open it up. You can turn on Air View pointer to see exactly where your S Pen pointing. Turn on Air View preview to scroll or pick into links, albums, and events by hovering your S Pen. Choose preview and pointer. Make sure that it is on, and I will show you what it does. For example, if we go to the gallery, you can. Just hover over your photos, videos, and preview them without opening. Also, you can share it via some messengers, applications, web, or delete without opening it. Very handy feature and works with links on websites, on your mails, and so on. If you hover over album, it will give you the preview of what is inside this album. But this feature won't work. If you have your magnification tool, your air view will disappear 
because your magnification tool is open. Close it and you will still have air view. And this feature do not work with translator on. So you need to use it separately. Next one. S Pen to Text. This gives you ability to handwrite and edit keyboard text. You can use special gestures to correct mistakes. I will show you. Look, you can just scratch it, you can make spaces, you can add additional letter between others, and so on. For example, here I can tap manually, but also I can handwrite with my S Pen. For example, if I want to delete this word, I can just scrape it or add additional letter between this. S Pen to text. Sometimes it's very useful. When S Pen is removed, I set it to do nothing. It's more convenient. By default, it opens air command. I don't want it. I suggest just leave it as do nothing. Screen of memos. You can write notes while screen is off. Just remove the S Pen and start writing. If you check the settings on, if you grab your S Pen, you can quickly start writing. If your S Pen is already out, you can just hover it over the screen and press the button, and start writing again. Quick notes. Press and hold the pen button, then tap the screen twice with your S Pen to create a new note. By default, if you check the settings on and press button and double tap, your phone will open Note app. But actually, you can customize it even further. You need GoodLog for this. Open GoodLog application. Open Pentastic inside GoodLog that we already downloaded. Go down and you will see double tap shortcut. You can customize it whatever you like. For example, I like double tap to be magnified. So now if I press the button and tap the screen two times, I can use magnification tool. If you decide to customize your double tap shortcut inside this Pentastic in GoodLog, you can see that this settings quick notes is grayed out, so you can't press it. Remember this. And now more S Pen settings. If you go inside, you can see that you can see that it has a lot more customizations for your S Pen. For example, S Pen unlock. You can press the button to unlock your device. You can use multiple S Pens. And check this out. Warn if S Pen is left behind. It shows you a little warning that you forgot S Pen somewhere and walk away with your phone while the screen is off. It will show notification. It even shows the last time you put it out of your device. Very handy. If you lose your S Pen, it is additional 50 bucks. So you can remember exactly where you were. Maybe you were at coffee shop or cafe that day, and you can remember and go and search your S Pen over there. If you don't want any vibrations or sound from your S Pen when you write, you can just turn it off in the small S Pen settings. And next one, I want to talk about gestures, because it can speed up your workflow. You can make your S Pen gestures, but you won't always use S Pen. So there are lots of features to have gestures with your fingers, like a normal use. Let's see what we can do to enhance and make easy our use of device. Basic gestures. By default, you will have this navigation bar at the bottom. You can go back, you can minimize everything, or you can open recent applications. But if you want to use gestures, you need to open settings, go to the display and find navigation bar. Press it and you can see that you can change buttons and swipe gestures. Press swipe gestures and now your bottom navigation panel go and it removed with gestures. Swipe up and hold to open recent apps. Swipe from the side to go back. It works from left and right. Or swipe up to go to the home screen. Also, you have your assistant or new feature circle to search. If you press on the bottom, you can circle and search with this new feature. Go back and you will see edge panel. This is quick menu. For example, I customize it to use YouTube, Maps, some browsers, translation, notes, calculator, everything that I use. You need to turn it on. If you press handle, I can move it on the screen. I can change transparency. For example, low it will be white and high it will be completely invisible. 
You can change the size of this panel, width, colors, lock the position, make it left or right if you left-handed. I like it to be completely transparent, medium size, and I put it somewhere on the bottom. If you press on this panel, it will show your recent applications and all the applications that you have chosen for yourself. Let's customize it. You can add any application, for example, games for this quick panel, and so on. This is just your personal preference. Also, there can be a lot more. Press Panels, and you can see different tools, your contacts, some smart select features, tasks, weather, music, your reminder and notes from the calendar, and so on. Let's check it out. Swipe from this panel, you can see your applications. This is Compass. We can choose Counter, Flashlight, we can turn this on or off, and Surface Level, Ruler, and so on. Let's see. We can add contacts from our contact list. You can have screenshots, create some tasks for your phone, check your weather, listen to music and make some reminders. Very handy feature to work faster with your phone. Let's go back to our main settings, scroll down, go again to the advanced features, and I want to talk about one-handed mode. This is large phone. Sometimes it's very uncomfortable to use it with one hand, but luckily we have one-handed mode. You can find it in the advanced features tab. Turn it on, press one-handed mode to see what it does. If you swipe from the bottom down, you will open one-handed mode. You can press this arrow to move it left and right. You can move it up or down and use your phone normally with one hand. Make some calls. And so on. To go out of this mode, just press anywhere on the screen. But you can customize this even further. You need our old friend Good Luck. Open it. In the Live App tab, you can find applications that called One Hand Operation Plus. Download this, open it, and you can turn this on. I suggest to turn both left and right hand. What it does, it gives you additional gestures to use your device with one hand. For example, you can swipe diagonally and go back on any place on the screen. Or you can swipe diagonally up and go to the recent apps. Also, if you swipe straight and hold, it will open this command center. You can change your brightness, control your music, and some basic stuff like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, portrait orientation, and so on. You can swipe diagonally on the bottom and see all the recent apps that you opened, swap between them or close them. If you swipe diagonally up and hold, it will open additional menu that you can customize in the good lock settings. So you can press left or right handle and choose whatever you like. You can see lots of settings over here. You can customize it for yourself. Short swipe, long swipe, anything you want. So it will look like this. You swipe down, choose your hand and all these features will be ready for you. Long swipe and hold and you will open additional menus or just use short swipes. Very easy. I find these features add a lot more comfort in your daily use. You can use your buttons to control your device. By default, if you press the power button and volume down, it will make a screenshot. If you press the power button and volume up, it will do nothing. But you can change this and customize your device even further. To do this, we need to go to the settings and find accessibility options. Press accessibility and you will find advanced settings. Press this advanced settings and you can find side and volume up buttons. You can find a lot of accessibility options, but I find mute all sounds very useful. If I press this side button and volume up, all sounds will be muted. If I press it again, I will turn on all sounds on my device. And also you can control volume up and down buttons at the same time. If you press it, you find the same settings, but I use extra dim. For example, if I am late at night and I want my screen to be a lot dimmer, not to disturb my wife and save my eyes, I can press up and down buttons at the same time, hold it for 3 seconds 
and my screen will go extra dim. It will be almost completely black. I like this feature. And if I press this again for the 3 seconds, screen will go back to normal. So this section was about controlling your device with gestures and buttons. And next thing that I want to talk about is multitasking, because S24 Ultra is a very nice device for multitasking. Let's see how we can do it easy. By default, if you go to the recent applications, press and hold, you can place your window up or down to use split window mode. You can choose another application, for example, calculator, and use your device this way. You can switch, you can customize the size of windows, and that is pretty much it, but we can enhance this. Let's go to the settings, find advanced features, and multi-window. I suggest to turn on both this feature, swipe to split screen, or swipe to pop-up view. If you put your fingers down and swipe up at the same time, you can automatically open split screen mode and choose any application you want. It's very easy. For example, you open YouTube, make this swipe with your both fingers, choose calculator and do your stuff. No problem at all. Second gesture, swipe from the top corner to enter floating window mode. I will show you. Put your finger on the top corner and swipe. And now your window is floating. You can change size, move it in place, very handy feature. You can press here, minimize it, it will be on the screen, you can move it, open it anytime, you can multi-screen it again, maximize it or close it. Also you can force any incompatible app to multi-window or floating window mode, even if it is not designed for this. To do this, you need to go to the settings, advanced features and find labs. Labs is experimental features, for example dark mode for apps, photo ambient wallpaper and so on. And here you can find multi windows for all apps. Press it and your Samsung phone will force all the apps to work with multi split screen or floating window mode. Also you can easily create multi screen shortcuts. Let's open two applications in split-screen mode, press these three dots in the middle, and you will see star. Press it, and you can add it to home screen or apps edge panel. Press it, add to home screen. Let's see, we got our shortcut. We can easily open these two applications in split-screen mode, so you can create multiple fast shortcuts for your workflow. Or you can add this to the Edge panel. So here is our new shortcut. Also I recommend to go to the Settings, Advanced Features and check Motions and Gestures. You can see different interesting features, Lift to Wake, Double Tap to turn screen on or off, Mute with Gestures, Alert when phone picked up, Ability to Palm Swipe to capture screenshots, and so on. To customize it even further, we need Good Lock. Open Good Lock and find Multi Star. This is improved multi window mode. Open it and you will find a bunch of settings. I like this multi window screen zoom. When the app is running with multi window, the screen is reduced to show a lot of content. Also, multi focus. Apps that stopped when they lose focus no longer stop. And also, this remove blur effects on adjusting split view. By default, if you adjust your split screen, you will see this blur effect. I do not like it. If you press remove blur effect, this will do exactly what it says. It will remove blur effect. So this good lock has a lot in depth customization. You can check it for yourself. So now we can easily control our application on the screen with gestures. Open split screen, force all apps into floating window mode and so on. Or you can do this by default. Long press from the recent apps and drop here or choose multi screen. If you watched this far, I want to show you bonus feature that helps me a lot in my work and makes operating the phone more easy. Go to the settings, find notifications and press 
notification pop-up style. It can be detailed or brief, but I want to show you edge lighting style. Press it, and you can see that you can change effects when you get notifications or messages. You can have different effects that you can customize. For example, this glow, multicolor, fireworks, but I like this eclipse. You can choose some colors, but I use this as outer and I go to the color by keyword. You can assign specific color to specific application. For example, WhatsApp will be green, YouTube will be red, and if I choose Viber, I can make it purple. You can assign any color to any application notifications, so I can see what notification I got from the far a lot easier. You can customize it even further if you use GoodLock. You need to go to the Makeup and find application called Edge Lighting. Press it, and you can see a bunch of different options. If you press Set Custom Style, you can choose different options, change the color, but I like the default one. To make your notifications even more clear, you can assign different sounds to specific applications. First of all, you need to go to the Settings, Notifications and Advanced Settings. Go to the bottom and you will see Manage Notification Categories for each apps. You need to check this on. Now, if you go to the Settings, Apps, you can customize any app you want. Let's use YouTube, press Notifications, and here on the bottom you can see Notification Categories. Press it. You need to assign specific sound, for example, for subscriptions, recommendations, feedback, notifications. Unfortunately, there is no way to assign one sound to the whole application. You need to specifically choose these options. If you get comments and replies on your video, you can choose sound. The same goes to your messenger apps, for example, WhatsApp, Viber. You need to specifically assign sounds to your messages, replies, and so on. So all these settings will make your Galaxy device more clear and fast, allowing you to multitask like never before. Subscribe and see you in the next video.